I'm going to run little bull nose clips like the kind you get at the office supply store to hold my ridge line in place. I've heard from some folks that this tends to snag their fabric, but I haven't had that problem on this silicone coated fabric. But if you do choose to use these, just be careful. Let's take care to say, okay, I'm not going to yank on it. Just be a little careful. Okay, that lined up pretty good. Let all our clips in. We'll be ready to go. So in our assembly instructions, the first thing we've done is we've cut out and we've taped together the catenary curve template. We've cut the two sides out of the fabric and we have cut the catenary curves into the edges of the tarp. So now we're going to sew the ridge line and we're going to do a flat felled seam. I'm going to use the walking foot on my machine. This is a specialty foot that helps feed the fabric through so that the bottom layer of fabric is feeding through at the same rate as the top layer. If you don't have a walking foot, you can certainly sew this with a standard foot and I have sewn a ridge line on a tarp with a regular foot and I will provide a link to how I did that if you wanted to check out how that looks but I've got some questions about using a walking foot when making camping gear and so I thought I would make a video and just show it with the walking foot and I have here on the bobbin plate of my machine my magnetic seam guide which is a neat little accessory and I have it set at 5 8 inch. Normally I sew a little bit narrower. I sew it half an inch but because I'm going to be doing a flat felt seam I want to give myself some space to make the fabric fold so I'm going to sew this at 5 8 inch. Give myself another eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to line up my pieces here so that everything is straight and square. I haven't put any pins in this. I've just had clips holding it, so I don't want to put any unnecessary needle holes in. I've got Mara 70 thread in my needle and my bobbin, and I am using a Microtex needle. That's a sharp needle, and it's size 12. But again, a universal needle would be fine. I have even sewn Sil Poly with a ballpoint needle, and that worked fine too. So just use the needle that you have. I'm just going to lock my stitch here at the front. And then as you can see, this machine, the foot kind of moves and you know, sort of feeds the fabric through so that you get a really nice on the back side here. You get really nice. There's no puckering or anything. This Sil Poly is actually a dream with the walking foot. Now each different type of machine may have a different walking foot and if you're interested in checking those out you may want to stop by your local sewing machine store. You know, my machine is a Husqvarna Viking, and this is the Husqvarna Viking brand walking foot. I'm keeping my eyes down here in this area, and that's because I have control to feed the fabric in down here. By the time my fabric gets up into the needle, you know, it's beyond the opportunity for me to do any steering. So, I just have both sides of the fabric here lined up and I'm just going to slowly make our way down. Check occasionally as in every few inches to make sure you don't have any fabric sort of folding up underneath because if you were to sew through multiple layers of fabric like that it would really cramp your style. I mean you'd have to rip out a seam and who wants to rip out a seam on a ridge line when you want to minimize unnecessary pin pricks? I mean it just is going to make the whole effort of seam sealing a little bit harder. I want you to notice also I'm keeping my hands in front of the needle. I'm not 
poking back here or yanking anything from the back. I'm allowing the feed dog and the walking foot to do its job. I do have to say though, this walking foot sure is nice on this. I mean, I'm really enjoying sewing this seam. Every time I stop the machine, I've got the needle in the down position. And my machine has a neat little trigger that I can depress, a button, that allows that to happen. So if your machine does not have an automatic down needle position setting, you'll want to just use the wheel on the side of the machine and simply wind it down. Because if you were to stop the seam with your needle up, and then you're manipulating this and smoothing it out and dealing with all the weight of the tarp that's kind of hanging off the side, the seams could actually, you know, get a cattywonk and then you would have some very unfortunate and crooked stitching. So just keeping that needle in the down position really keeps everything coordinated for the long seam that we've got to do. I want to tell you something about the beauty of this walking foot. It really prevents the two sides of the fabric, the top and bottom fabric, from feeding at a different rate. And now, here's the proof in the pudding. I'm at the end of a 132 inch ridge line, and look at this. My two corners line up pretty much exactly. So I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. All right, I'm going to back stitch some. Well, cut that off. I have the tarp spread out here so that you can see this seam. This is the standing edge here. Now, Black Bishop does his with a flat filled seam, which means you take this seam here, the standing edge of your seam, and fold it over and press it flat. And then that we're going to stitch, and then we'll get a nice little ridge line seam right there. And there are a couple of ways you could do this. One way is you could take a pair of scissors and you could trim back half of this so that it's pretty narrow and that'll give you something to actually fold this around on and I will do that if I am sewing a stiffer fabric one of the heavier weight ripstop nylons I always do that because then you get a lot of bulk but this 1.1 ounce sil poly is just so fine that I'm not gonna bother with trimming but if you feel as though the fabric you chose is one where you want to fold it over or just out of sense of confidence you want to trim it back, you know, just do what you think is going to be right for you. So we're going to line this up on the machine and we're going to make this fold and then we're going to just do another seam right along kind of close to the edge here so that we get that all just nice and pinched in. So I've just checked my bobbin thread and I have plenty of thread in my bobbin to complete the ridge line. So I've got the entire bulk of the tarp in my lap and I'm just going to fold this over and get it started here. You could decide if you want to fold it clockwise or counterclockwise. It's entirely up to you. Okay, this is your tarp. Now I want to center this. You see what I'm doing here? I think I'm blocking the camera with my hand. I want to center this fold so that it is under my foot such that the needle is going to come down right in the magic spot along the edge of my seam. And if you've got a needle that you can wiggle side to side and decide which direction you want it to be in, you could have it over to the right or you could have it over to the left. 
I'm going to line this up because I want to make sure my seam is nice and straight. So I'm going to line this up so that this fold in my fabric is going to hit the center of my foot. It's going to hit right the center. So that means I'm going to move my needle over slightly so that it's going to catch the actual fold and not fall right on top of this crease. So we'll just slowly sew a few, go back and block that with some stitches. Now we're just going to go slow. I've got my foot lined up here with my fold. I'm spreading this fabric out and then I'm just pinching over and folding. And once you get it started, it's a whole lot easier to just pinch and fold. And I, I really like this walking foot for this purpose. It's just working really well. I'm happy that someone asked me to show a walking foot because I really like this. And if you get into sewing more and start investing in some specialty feet, it really can make it feel a whole lot easier. I guess that's one of the kind of cruel things about sewing is that when you get started, you don't have the skill set, so everything feels a lot harder. But then as you get going and you get more supplies and more things can really you know, make it a lot easier. So, so I'm spreading out like this. I'm, I'm making sure I don't have any multiple layers in the back. As I'm at the points here, it's not as challenging. But when I get towards the center and I have the full width of the tarp there, it will become much more challenging to keep everything from getting squirrely. As things start to get kind of thick here with fabric, it can help to just roll the edges to keep them out of your way so you're not sort of swimming amongst yards and yards of fabric. I mean, you're going to be swimming amongst yards of fabric anyway, as I am right now, but I try and keep it somewhat under control. I'm just doing a straight seam. I've got my seam length at about three. Get all the way to the end. Well, Lock it off. There we've got a flat felt seam, which will then seam seal. Here we've got our flat filled seam run down the edge, and what we'll do when the tarp is finished is we'll put a seam sealer on that to protect the, um, the edges. This is you can tell I've got a white dog, can't you? Here's what the back side looks like, which I think we'll use as the outside. Right like that. <laughs> 